All right, I think it's time, two o'clock. We should start our webinar. Yes, we should. So hello, everyone. Um, I hope you all have a pleasant Thursday afternoon or perhaps morning or somewhere already evening. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to participate on our first online webinar. Um, we really appreciate it even more because we know that today is a national holiday in many European countries. So thanks again. Um, to start and to introduce ourselves, um, I am Lenka and I'm here with my colleague Tom and we both are representing Data from Sky team. Hello everyone, my name is Tom and we are so happy to having you here. Great, so today we are here because we want to show you what we call a revolution in traffic intelligence. What can you expect from today's webinar? Well, we will give you some background information, what was the idea behind and uh, why we are doing what we are doing. And we will focus on Flow and what it actually is, describe our own products based on Flow. And then we will move to the real demonstration of Flow and uh, we will close the webinar with our uh, questions and answers. Uh, you are free to ask the questions anytime during the course of the webinar uh, through the chat box. We will then um, answer them at the end of the, of the presentation. But first thing first, uh, before we get directly into flow, uh, let me share with you how our journey in traffic analytics began. So let's get into it. Our journey has started in 2014. Uh, when our brand Data from Sky was born from results of a research project. Back then, it was an engine combining artificial intelligence, video from drones and trajectory-based approach. And soon, Data from Sky became a so-called game changer. We came with an idea of uh, using drones for traffic surveys instead of manual counts. And eventually, we were able to fine tune the AI engine to get up to 30 centimeter precision in vehicles localization. And that opened completely new use cases such as safety evaluation based on driver's behavior. From the sky, uh, we came back down to earth and we have extended our application portfolio. Um, in 2017, uh, Parking Detection product was launched as full-feature smart parking platform. We were again a little bit closer to real-time traffic monitoring. And since 2017, the deployment grew to today's almost 24,000 parking spots being monitored each second. Last year, Data from Sky grew into a network of 34 partners worldwide. We have more than 20 academic partners and we have delivered video analytics for more than 900 traffic surveys. And with this base, uh, we can collaborate on large scale projects uh, such as combining up to 10 simultaneously flying drones to analyze the traffic flow in over uh, 100 intersections at once. And with this huge progress, uh, we were constantly approached to develop new solutions, uh, especially in online analytics. But we knew that there is something wrong about the process workflow for these uh, real-time systems. Because if you want to implement a new application, uh, you have to keep in mind many aspects like the correct selection of hardware and software, then system deployment and configuration. You have to train the operators on the new system. And finally, you have to integrate the system into the current applications. And all of that is done on multiple levels and use cases. So you need some system and special sensor for smart parking. You need a sensor for traffic control, for people counting, or a special system for security purposes. So at the end, the scenario can look like a, like a total nightmare, as you can see. Uh, a nightmare made of a too complex and diverse uh, network of solutions where you have uh, one application, 
one sensor and for each of them a separate workflow of integration. And this is not a sustainable approach to smart sensors nor to even more complex smart city concept. That's why we said stop and we started thinking that we want to choose a, a different path. We realized how great it would be if there is a solution uh, which integrates hundreds of individual sensors into a single one. Is puzzle easy to connect with other pieces? And a solution which is simple to use and understandable in no time. And from that idea, we have created Flow, a tool that tries to break down all of these obstacles. Flow is a comprehensive visual traffic language analyzing traffic movements from any video stream in real time. It's a tool that can turn the video data into actionable intelligence. It's very easy to configure and thanks to Open API, it can talk to other devices and systems. We have been looking for a user interface that can uh, unleash the potential of the AI core while being able to support the broad range of applications that uh, Flow can actually serve. Uh, we wanted an intuitive environment where you could design a complex task without any programming knowledge. And that's why we selected this visual par programming paradigm. You can actually see the data flow through the solution. You can feel like being inside of the data while you configure your own sensor. But how the flow can be used? Um, there are many application fields, so for example, smart traffic in form of a simple statistic, such as classified counts or turning movements, or as an input for optimization of traffic lights in segment of smart parking to detect free or occupied spots or detect parking violations or also in segment of uh, retail, smart buildings or security to count people or cyclists and visualize their, their paths. So to, to sum it up, a flow is a platform giving you the ability to use one sensor for multiple purposes. It's like having hundreds of outfits with just one coat. So now you know what the flow is, but let's uh, focus now on uh, what are the possibilities of deployment. We have launched our own product line based on flow. So the AI engine is ported into the following products, AI camera, traffic embedded and traffic enterprise. And now we will focus on each product in more detail. One of the product is called Flow AI Camera. Um, the highly optimized traffic brain runs directly on the AI ready camera and performs the traffic analysis of a live video stream. AI camera is all in one solution. It's uh, very universal and easy to deploy. You can just take the camera out of the box and define your task with Flow and then start receiving the traffic insights. It's actually that easy how it sounds. And you will be ready to make the informed decisions in no time. AI camera can be used for multiple purposes again, so from traffic monitoring, parking management, retail, up to security tasks. The second product where Flow Engine has been also ported to is our outdoor analyzer called Traffic Embedded. Um, this device provides full onboard processing. Traffic Embedded is a standalone uh, anti-vandal unit with on-edge analytics. It's uh, based on plug and play principle. So you just connect the device with any type of IP camera and get the traffic data right away. And what's more, one unit can process up to six camera streams in real time. 
There are also various uh, connectivity options from cable, uh, LoRa, through Wi-Fi or up to LTE. And since the processing is done um, in the unit on site, it's fully secure and uh, GDPR, GDPR compliant solution. The last product from Flow family uh, that we are going to introduce you today is called uh, Traffic Enterprise. It's a six traffic sense running on in-house servers and converting camera streams into the universal sensoric network. Traffic Enterprise is a centralized solution uh, which allows you to connect an endless number of cameras and then create a real collaborative traffic intelligence. The advanced traffic AI works automatically and uh, detects and tracks all objects in the camera view, including pedestrians up to bicycles. It's a very suitable option uh, for already existing camera network in a city. Uh, traffic Enterprise provides you with full control in all aspects. Everything is processed on dedicated AI city servers and the system can easily communicate with other parts of your smart city infrastructure. Now we have uh, introduced all products in a nutshell. Um, to summarize it, each product can offer high scalability and its deployment is uh, straightforward. And here is a design of the flow architecture. So there are two products with on-edge analytics called AI camera and traffic embedded and one product for centralized analytics called traffic enterprise. In case of the AI camera, all processing is done on site directly in the camera and you can transfer only the traffic data extract. The second row displays the architecture of traffic embedded unit. Uh, which can receive and process up to six camera streams in real time. And only the traffic data extract can then leave the embedded unit. And the last row displays the enterprise variant, uh, where you can process an unlimited number of city cameras on your local AI server. And are you asking which solution you should use? Now, that actually depends on many factors. Uh, one important of them is, for example, data connectivity. So if the data connection is weaker, then it's uh, better to use edge solutions. But experience is uh, much better than lots of slides and, and words. So now I would like to give my word to my colleague Tom and he will show you the live demo of Flow. Great, Linka. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful introduction. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen with you and uh, I will show you how, how the Flow application actually looks. So... Um, Right away, when you when you log in, this is the screen you will you will get, and uh, here we just type in the IP address of uh, of the AI camera or the embedded unit, and uh, we connect directly to the uh, uh, to the flow. I'm already connected over here. <clears throat> this is how it looks, and. Uh, as you can see on the left side, we have a panel with the uh, basic menu. Here we have the camera view. And on the right side, there is a workspace where we are going to actually set up all the filters. Uh, here we already see in the camera view trajectories which were, which were detected. Different colors actually represent different uh, objects. Uh, here we can disable each trajectory uh, so if you want to see only only pedestrians here, we see only pedestrians if you want to add bicycles We can add bicycles very easily, etc, etc uh, If you notice each each uh, Vehicle or each object has some uh, information about it. Uh, we can uh, Toggle on and off this information over here just like this uh, so color we won't see the color uh, stationary duration, etc., etc. So we can really 
uh, set up the view in the way we, we want to. Uh, all right, let's start configuring something. Let's start with uh, something basic. Uh, and uh, let's say that we want to know uh, what and how many vehicles went from this uh, uh, bottom direction up to the, to the top. Let's say that that's the city center. So we will create two, two gates actually uh, in bound south. Uh, we will create one one more gate over here, uh, which is going to be the uh, city center gate, and we will create the movement between those two gates, just like this. We will rename the movement to uh, from south to city center. And we will select the, the, the movement and drag and drop it to the workspace, just like this. As we have it over here, uh, we are now we now see that there were 175 objects uh, going in this direction. But we want to know only motorized vehicles, so we add here a category filter. Uh, and we will select light, heavy, bus and motorcycle as well, cars. All right. And we connect this category filter with the movement, just like this. And we see that there are uh, less motorized vehicles, only, uh, only 162 matching this, uh, this filter. Uh, wonderful, that's, that's basically the idea. Let's do something more. Uh, here we have a turning lane. And as we can see, this turning lane is, uh, uh, is used only in one direction. So we want to have a sensor for a wrong way driving. We'll create two gates for that again. One gate we'll name turning lane one. Another one will be turning lane two. And we will create a movement in the direction of, oh, sorry, uh, we will create, and we will create a movement in the direction of the wrong way. Back. Again, we drag and drop it to the workspace. Here we are, get it over here. And we see that there are actually zero uh, vehicles matching this filter, which, which is good, means that no uh, no object uh, went wrong way in this turning lane. Awesome. Uh, let's do let's do one more thing. Let's say that we want to know uh, if and when uh, U-turns are happening over here. Uh, so we'll create one more gate here, and we will rename the gate to outbound south, and we create a movement between these two gates in the way the u-turn would actually happen and the movement will be named u-turn and again we just uh drag and drop it to the to the workspace and we see that there are as well uh zero u-turns which which is good right awesome so we, we already created three sensors here in this, this one view. All of them were using simple, simple gates and movements. So let's do something more uh, and let's create a zone. Uh, here we can create a zone just like this, for example. All right. And we can adjust the zone to, to be exactly in the shape we want it to be. And let's rename it to waiting zone. All right, and we again move it to the workspace. And now we see that there are 226 uh, objects passing this zone in, in any way. Uh, but we don't want that. We want to be informed uh, when there are cars waiting in this zone on the on the traffic light. So we'll add a category filter. We can actually use here the same one we already used. We'll just connect it with the with the zone, 
and now we are filtering only motorized vehicles passing this gate so that's 205 mm -hmm. that's again not exactly what we wanted we want to be informed about the uh, current vehicles there so we change the setup of the zone to now and as we can see there are actually zero uh, motorized vehicles right now let's see if there is any car coming we'll see we will see later anyway so now we are actually filtering only uh, motorized vehicles which are currently in that uh, waiting zone uh, but that's not yet what we want we want to be informed when there are cars waiting for the traffic light so we will add one more one more one more filter which is the stationary duration and we will change the setup to a value of 10 seconds so we'll say that if there is any vehicle for longer than 10 seconds uh, show me that um, obviously for this demonstration uh, I, I chose 10 seconds but uh, in real life we would use some higher number and we again connected with the with the waiting zone and we see that currently there are no no vehicles waiting for more than than 10 seconds which is actually true because there is there is nothing uh right now uh let's see if there if there will come something uh why we do that so we can now add um uh an action for for this filter and change the traffic light because this filter would actually detect us uh, detect uh, vehicles waiting here on the traffic light so we can set up a filter to uh, to uh, trigger uh, an action and change the uh, traffic light uh, all right so we created a few filters uh, we set those up and uh, now let's see yeah there is a car actually coming and we see that there is number one as being in the waiting zone but the zero uh, because in the stationary duration because there uh, the car was not waiting there for more than 10 seconds um, all right uh, let's do something more with the data let's uh, create some uh, dashboard and widgets so here on the another tab we have widgets and we can uh, add these widgets to, to these filters. So let's use the distribution widget over here. Category distribution, uh, apply. And what happens now? Now here in the dashboard, we got a widget with the category distribution. We can change it, put it wherever we, we want to. We can actually change even the settings of the widget and add coloring. So let's say that if there are zero to five, it's going to be green. If it's six to, I don't know, uh, 15, sorry, 15, it's going to be orange. If it's uh, 16 to, um, I don't know, 30, uh, 30, it's going to be blue. And if it's uh, 30 and above, it's going to be, let's say, red. Apply the settings and we see that actually uh, here we got the, the green for heavy vehicles we have uh, 27 buses which is different blue and yellow motorcycles because it's only eight this way we can adjust it uh adjust the coloring any way we want to but let's add a few more widgets to it uh let's say that we want to know um uh, we want to have a, a value for example, to this wrong way and U-turn, we want to have a simple number uh, when a uh, wrong way is happening. So we would just add wrong ways widget to there and the same to U-turns. All right. And on the dashboard, we got two more widgets 
with a simple number showing us the amount of uh, wrong ways and U-turns on this intersection. Um, all right, let's add one more, which is a statistical value. For that, I will just change this setup uh, to, to all the time. And let's add the statistical value to stationary duration. Uh, statistics of the waiting zone. So we will see all the statistics of this waiting zone. Like uh, here we can see the minimum waiting time, which is obviously zero seconds. Uh, maximum, which is almost a minute. Uh, in average, it was 38 seconds and median is uh, 41 uh, or almost 42 seconds. Uh, we can again move the widget anywhere we want to. Let's leave it over here for now. And let's add one more uh, trajectory view, which is very beautiful. And I will apply this widget to the category filter, uh, which will show us uh, category trajectory trajectories and apply these settings and what we got we got here one more which is actually showing us the uh, view of the camera with uh, with uh, those trajectories we can zoom in and play around and set it in any way we want in this way we actually have uh, uh, we actually have uh, camera view on the widget with all all the statistics, graphs, numbers. We have it all in one screen. All right, great. Uh, we created a few widgets, and let's do uh, what what we can do now. We need to use the data in uh, some way. We need to process it somehow. For that, we will use uh, here Sinks, which is another tab over here. It, it has um, more or less the same um, uh, uh, same elements as widgets, uh, but uh, we will just set up the export using these. So let's say that we want to be notified when there is a, a wrong way or U-turn happening, so about traffic violations. I will use one more uh, operator and I will uh, connect these two in one. And here I will apply the, the sync. Uh, we'll add value over here and uh, traffic violations notification object count and for now. All right, so in this way I actually set the, the, uh, the sync to export the data of this wrong way and U-turn uh, in a simple value information uh, anywhere we want. To further set these syncs, uh, we have uh, we have a documentation available. So if you click here on the on the help button, you will be actually redirected to our uh, help desk. Um, where we have uh, articles describing the uh, APIs uh, and how to set it up to get the data out of the flow. All right, let's get back in. And actually, actually we covered it all. We created one, two, three, four, uh, four uh, sensors in one camera view. And actually, the, there is no limit in creation. So we could create a zone here in the core of the intersection to see whether there are pedestrians crossing it here in the core. Or we could create a zone on this waiting island to count amount of bicycles waiting on the traffic light. Or we, we really can play around any way um, we want to. The imagination is our limit. Um, not not the software. The software can actually process any amount of uh, of filters. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it from this from this showcase. And I believe it should be questions and answers section now, because I saw some questions to be to be rising up. So yeah, looking forward.
Great, thank you Tom for this uh, demonstration of flow. So I hope you all have now a better idea of uh, how the flow system can work and how a versatile tool it actually is. Um, and now there is a space for your questions to be, to be answered. Uh, during the time when Tom was showing you the, the flow demo, I put together some questions that uh, were asked more frequently. So, uh, but there are more and more questions coming, so we probably won't be able to uh, cover and answer them uh, all, but uh, we will come to each question later on. So uh, let's focus on the questions uh, which appears here. So first of one uh, was what is the uh, accuracy of the vehicle's detection? Well, that, that really actually depends um, on, uh, on the input for, for the flow engine. Um, and that input is based on camera, obviously. So uh, the best is to have a camera resolution in uh, uh, full HD, even though uh, we could uh, process uh, VGA as well. Um, frame rate should be, uh, well, frame rate actually varies based on the use case. So if it's for some uh, city application, then uh, it can be somewhere around 15 frames per second. If it's for a highway detection, their speeds are higher and also frame rate should be higher. So around uh, 20, 25 and more. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the engine needs 32 to 32 uh, pixels for an object to be, to be detected. So with the optimal conditions and optimal setup of cameras, uh, we have tested uh, on our side and at our customers, partners, uh, that the uh, accuracy of the detection is somewhere around 98%. Okay. Moving to next question, which was uh, how many detection categories are available? So uh, in the standard mode, uh, there are seven uh, classes which are available in flow. And these are car, uh, light vehicle, heavy vehicle, bus, motorcycle, bicycle and pedestrian. But uh, it can be actually extended up to 16 classes. Uh, because it can be customized to your own project. Okay, so another question. What hardware, hardware platform do you use? Well, for uh, Traffic Enterprise and Traffic Embedded, uh, we use NVIDIA products. The Embedded is based on Jetson family and the Enterprise is based on NVIDIA GPUs. And regarding the AI camera, uh, the flow is available on uh, security and safety things, um, so you can actually download it uh, uh, and to, to run it on any supported uh, AI camera. So if you have a camera enabled uh, uh, by security and safety things store, you can just download it and install. Yes. All right. Can you measure distances between people? Well. I don't know if you if you noticed, but um, uh, but on the first or second slide, second, uh, Lenka was showing a short video where the car was going around the roundabout, and there was a bounding box around that car, uh, showing also the distances between other uh, vehicles in that roundabout. So if if uh, cars got uh, closer. It showed uh, uh, exactly the uh, distance in meters. If if it got further, then it uh, enlarged. So the answer is yes, yes, which is I believe very uh, useful nowadays. All right, uh, one more question: minimal camera re resolution. That's what we already answered. Can I use flow for traffic studies from uh, video records? Well, actually, Flow is um, meant to be used for real-time applications, so ideally for smart cities. Uh, however, if, uh, if you want to conduct a traffic study, uh, we have a, a platform where you can upload your videos, get it analyzed, and uh, uh, you can create your study. Just go to ai.datafromsky.com and there are all the details about, uh, about this post-processing. 
And the last question we have here, uh, is there a way to test it? Uh, yes, actually it is. We have a surprise or a gift for you. Um, so actually, uh, you can try it on your own. If you go to our website, datafromsky.com, you can download here the Flow Demo Kit. And in that way, you can then apply the same filters and logics and uh, operation filters as you have seen in our demonstration. So uh, try it on your own. Yeah, you, you will actually download exactly the same application as I showed you, uh, where is already uh, test or demo video, which you've seen actually. So you can, you can play around. Or if you actually want to analyze your own videos, just uh, and, and try it on your own, just get in touch with us and we'll help you out how to do it. And the last thing, uh, we would like to take this opportunity to invite you already for our second webinar, uh, which will take place on Thursday 18th of June at the same time as today. And uh, this webinar will be more focused on edge solutions and we will pick up some use cases for each product and describe them. Like for example, how to deploy a people counter or a cyclist counter or how to get traffic data for adaptive traffic light control, etc. etc. So stay tuned and we would like to see you all on the second webinar. And that's it, I think. So thank you everyone for your time and attention to our online web webinar. So we really appreciate that you were here with us. Yeah, thank you. And in case you have uh, any other questions or would like to get more information about uh, uh, anything what we showed you today, feel free to come back to us. Take care, have a nice day and remember let, Let the, the traffic, traffic flow, flow with flow. flow.